welcome everybody to Wednesday worship, noon worship at the Institute on Religion and Democracy here in Washington, D.C. We welcome those who are here physically. We welcome those who are watching online. We are delighted that our preacher today is the Reverend Richard Hyde from a church on the West Coast called the San Carlos the San Carlos Community Church in San Carlos, California, not very far outside of San Francisco. Correct. Belongs to the United Church of Christ in which Richard Hyde is ordained. So, Richard, we're delighted that you can be here with us, and we're delighted that our music is led by Baptist Josiah Reedy. So, let us begin with our opening hymn. Come thou fount of every blessing. <clears throat> of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We have two scripture readings this morning, for this afternoon, <coughs> verses from Jeremiah. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked and utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can hold no water. And listen to another appeal from the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, 
to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. <clears throat> what of this world? <clears throat> Normally, I don't have titles for sermons, but this time I have a title. What of this world? What is going on in this world of ours? Sometimes we ask this question in delight and wonder. How is it that there is a world at all? How is it that I wake up and there are birds singing and flowers in bloom? How is it that I wake up a few months later and it's snowing? A completely different kind of beauty. Other days we ask this question in sheer terror. What of this world? Is it going to get blown up by nuclear war? Will it get cooked to general death by climate change? Will the world as we know it somehow fall apart because we are so deeply divided or because the younger generation just doesn't care? This morning we're going to look for an answer to this question in Paul's letter to the Romans. And I think that you will see that he has quite an answer for us. Paul did not write, <coughs> but dictated his letters. Reading one Paul, reading Paul, one gets the image of a man with a lot on his mind, pacing back and forth, delivering himself of these deep meditations while his secretary must have struggled mightily to keep up with him. Somewhat like Winston Churchill, I hear that I've read that Winston wore out secretaries. He had to call in sometimes two and three for a single session. Um, maybe Paul as well. Paul is a person like us with modern questions and modern torments. What of this world he must have asked himself many a time in amazement and anguish similar to our own? How long will the peace of the Roman Empire last? Will the hatred of my countrymen for Rome and one another ever cease? Will I be beaten to death for my preaching by an angry mob of Jews or by an angry mob of Gentiles or perhaps both? Now, since we are in this week just after Labor Day and the traditional beginning of school, let me bring in what Dartmouth College President John Dickey said at convocation in Hanover 72 years ago on the Hanover Plain in Daniel Webster Memorial Hall. I bring him in because he asked that question of the day. What of this world? Imagine John Dickey, a giant of a man who looked like Dwight David Eisenhower. What of this world in which we face? What of this world which we face, where no man may live more than one life, nor need die more than one death? Its errors and evils are not new. This is John Dickey speaking. A student of history finds their counterpart in every recorded society. What is new is not the evil in man, but the range of its opportunity and the immensity of its consequences. 
within the last fifty years alone the destructive potentialities of human error and evil have been increased beyond calculation i shall cite here only three of the principal factors in that development first the opening of the widest chasm of ideological conflict the world has ever known second the fantastic increase in the destructive power possessed by men as contrasted with the relatively static state of the moral and political controls governing such power and thirdly the rise of the mass media of communication making the emotions and minds of millions the constant prey of the few in the 72 years since the problems he enunciated certainly have not been resolved indeed they have metastasized and become much more challenging particularly the third problem he mentioned namely the rise of the mass media of communication making the emotions and minds of millions the constant prey of the few remember this is when people were reading magazines and newspapers and television was in its infancy <clears throat> there has always been conflict there have always been some people who accumulated power and misused it there has always been war and ideology always has had something to do with it not to mention selfishness greed avarice and so on the seven deadly sins have always had something to do with human conflict <clears throat> but the relentless bombardment of branding and marketing advertising data collection marketing techniques messaging algorithms in a world in a word propagandizing <clears throat> this is not new but the whole apparatus of propaganda is much more powerful and pervasive than ever certainly more powerful than it was 72 years ago when that quaint era we look back longingly on as the 50s began of course the mass media deliver their blessings as well but we can certainly say that the task of paying attention to the real world in which we live and the real people upon whom we rely is much more difficult than it has ever been that is one reason I think coming to church of a Sunday morning to pay attention live and in person and real time with your neighbors <clears throat> to listen to a pastor of whatever variety to his or her best make sense of what is going on in the world is so important and I thank you for attending such a quaint and old-fashioned event on a busy weekday at noon now listen to St. Paul as if he were responding to our question. What of this world? Do not be conformed to this world, he calmly tells us, <clears throat> but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. This is one of those cases where listening to the original language is rewarding. Listen for some familiar syllables in this famously difficult Greek language. Kaime suskematitsista to ioni tuto. Hear the word suskematitsista, that means do not be schematized. Do not be schematized by the present age. Ala metamorphista. Tayana kainose tunus. Metamorphosta. Be metamorphosed. Be metamorphosed by the renewal of your mind. Be not schematized, but be metamorphosed. Be not conformed, but be transformed is a good translation. Do not become just another link in the causal chains of violence and counter-violence, of sin and retribution, of rage and resentment, of complaint and counter-complaint, <coughs> that our culture is chock-a-block full of. Do not let yourself be buffeted by every fad that sweeps through the culture 
for every marketing scheme that comes across the screen do not overreact to the screaming headlines or the shouting people do not allow your reptilian brain to be manipulated into action our friend russell moore has a wonderful column about the reptilian brain on his site this week on christianity today be not conformed but be transformed we christians believe that that in this world the light <coughs> shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it we believe with dante that it is love that moves the sun and all the stars l'amore che muove il sole e l'altra stella see everything sounds better in italian <laughs> L'amore che muove il sole e l'altra stella, the love that moves the sun and all the stars. That's in Paradiso. We believe that there is much more to us than a mix of genes and happenstance. We believe that each of us is a unique person loved by God, and each one of us is more than genetic code, flesh, bones, and a nervous system. God is capable of conforming us to his purpose and has a much higher purpose for us in mind than simply reacting to whatever the world throws at us. So be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect, so that you may be led by the eternal spirit, God the creator, God who is somehow in an amazing way beyond us and within us with the Holy Spirit. God's the source and sustainer of our being. The Alpha, the Omega, the source of our life, the goal of our striving, the fountain of living waters. What a wonderful image of ever-changing and ever-renewing life the prophet the gloomy prophet Jeremiah has given us. For all the gloom and doom in Jeremiah, some of the most bright and joyful good news is embedded in his prophecies, the fountain of living waters. Well, at this point I could say there you have it. End of sermon. Do not do evil, do good. Tune out the bad tuned into the good and now let's have lunch don't worry i will not keep you much longer but just a little bit because for a sermon like this clearly um the question must be well now how how are we going to do this how are we going to become spiritual adepts at disconnecting ourselves from all the messages that are bombarding us every day how do we escape from the clever schemes of the marketers and the propagandists? Well, of course, all of the practices that have brought us here in the first place, attend church, participate in Christian community, a Bible study is helpful, um, gathering a community for lunch and dinner, supporting one another in all these ways. Let me suggest just one more thing to add to your repertoire. Let me recommend to you some kind of Christian yoga, for lack of a better word, or to break it down to its components. Let me recommend a daily practice, even if it's just five minutes, of bending, stretching, and breathing. Now, even neuroscientists suggest to us that one of the best way to fight the effects of aging is just to do something different every day. Even if it's just do a crossword puzzle, take a different route to work, ride a bicycle, try rollerblading, anything to break you out of your normal patterns is going to help just a little. So, just for a little practice, we could pretend to be Baptist, Put your hands over your heads. We can do this. We can do this. It's a big stretch up and look that way. All right. And then bend one way, okay? And pause. Just pause. And take a big deep breath. And 
accept that you are exactly who you are and where you are and how you are and accept that you can't possibly bend another millimeter. Let it out. And isn't that amazing how much more you could do if you just give it all up. Now come back up to the top here. We've got it now over the other side now. Go as far as you can go and pause. And now just surrender. You've done the best you could possibly do. The results are now in God's hands. Take a big breath. And over you go. And that, those, okay. Now come back up and just let the arms float down. Now, you've got a little more oxygen in you than before. Oxygen is the best drug on the planet. There are no bad side effects. It makes pain less painful, makes joy more joyful. So I think oxygen and the Holy Spirit very, very intimately connected. So just bend a little, breathe a little, push any kind of an envelope a little, and that will make you a little more aware of that fountain of living water within you that God has blessed us with. A little less prey to the raging torrent of information coming at you. A little more capable of transforming instead of conforming. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the blessing of being with you and listening to your holy word this morning. We thank you for blessing us with the ability to lift our voices and sing. We thank you for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. And at this end of summer, at this beginning of fall, on this first Wednesday of September, may we begin again as Christians and as Americans by being not conformed by this world but being transformed by the renewal of your minds our bodies our communities by loving and serving you lord the giver of life and by sharing the gospel in a world that desperately needs to hear it and bless this food which we are about to receive from thy bounty through christ our lord amen
Thank you. Help yourself to lunch.